Hello viewers, and today's lesson is looking at psychoacoustics. Psychoacoustics is looking at the mechanics of the ear and how the individual parts in the inner ear, middle ear and outer ear work. We'll be looking at how sound passes through the full ear and send this signal up to the brain and ultimately how the brain is able to identify what sound is. The outer ear comprises of the pinner, ear canal and terminates at the eardrum. The pinner directs, collects and amplifies sound waves through the ear canal. The shape of the pinner helps to boost and filter sounds which are found within the human speech range. The eardrum, also known as the tympanic membrane, is a thin membrane that vibrates due to the sound waves passing through it. It then transfers these vibrations into the middle ear via the malleus. The ossicles are the three bones found in the middle ear. They make up the middle ear. These three bones amplify the sound waves and send that signal to the cochlea found in the inner ear. These three bones are called the malleus, incus and stapes and are also known as the hammer, anvil and stirrup. The inner ear. The two main parts of the inner ear are known as the vestibule and cochlea. The vestibule is used for balance while the cochlea is used for hearing. The cochlea is filled with a fluid and as sound waves pass through the cochlea it excites hairs on the basilar membrane which runs down the centre of the inner ear. Now we have learned about the three main parts of the ear, it's time to learn about humans perception of directional sound. These are down to four factors. Comb filtering, time slash phase differences level differences and frequency differences. Level differences. The difference between the two different levels reaching both ears. Comb filtering. As many sounds are reflected in off the pinner into the ear canal, the ear is able to identify the earliest sound. Time slash phase difference. The difference between the two different lengths of sound waves reaching both ears. Frequency. The head acts as an obstacle and certain frequencies are lost due to diffraction. The two main reasons for hearing loss are the overexposure to prolonged loud noises will damage the hair cells found in the cochlea. The second is aging. As people grow older, the hair cells become less reactable to the sound and therefore do not pick up sound as well. The control of noise at work regulations 2005 state that if a sound increases in volume in a certain area then the exposure time to that volume should be reduced. For example, an area where there is a 90 dB exposure time of 8 hours then the, and they increase that sound to 96 then the exposure time should be halved and therefore should be 4 hours. If in the employees will oblige to these regulation rules and they must make sure that they reduce themselves to loud noise, provide signs saying to you should wear ear protection in areas where there is loud noise, and also provide some sort of training to these people so they are able to cope with working in these areas of loud noise. Thanks again viewers, hope you learned something there. Tune in next time for my final acoustics lesson where we'll be looking at room acoustics. But as always, it's goodbye from me.